welcome to the 2012 Open Enrollment for the College of the Desert. Uh, my name is Debbie Harold, and I'm with Alliant Insurance Services. Uh, we are your insurance broker and it is a pleasure to represent the district in your employee benefits program. Our guest speakers today are Nicole from CISC, we have Jackie from Unum to talk about the long-term care, and we have Kathy from Anthem Blue Cross and Cheryl representing Delta Dental PPO. So today we're going to be talking about open enrollment and what you can do. Open enrollment is through August 31st, so any changes that you make will take effect October 1st, and they will remain in effect for a full 12 months. The only way that you can make changes is if you experience a qualifying life event. Some of those examples are a change in marital status, birth or adoption of a child, a change in employment status or work schedule, change in dependent child's eligibility status, a court order, or death of a spouse or a child. The choices that you can make during open enrollment is you can enroll in the medical, dental, or vision plans. You can also switch from one plan to the other. So if you're in the dental HMO and you want to go on the PPO, you can switch plans. If you're on a medical HMO and you want to switch one of the PPO plans, you can do that as well. You can also add and remove dependents. To add a dependent to the, you require the following documentation. A birth certificate, adoption papers, or court order. If you're married, a copy of your marriage certificate, or if you're a domestic partner, you need to be registered with the state of California and have a declaration of domestic partnership for members of the same gender, or one or both of the persons of the opposite sex over the age of 62. And CISC also requires an affidavit of domestic partnership. New uh, October 1, 2012, you will be able to enroll your dependent children to the age of 26 on the dental and vision plan. And that's regardless of um, their financial dependence, residency, student, or marital status. So you can currently do that on the medical plan, and now we've expanded it on the dental and vision effect of October 1. Just a reminder, free flu shots uh, provided through CISC are on September 25th. They will be held right here in the multi-purpose room. You can drop by, walk-ins are welcome from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So please take advantage, it's a great benefit that is provided to all CISC members. Benefits at a glance, you have four medical plans to choose from, one HMO, three PPO plans. The prescription drug benefit is the same for all medical plans, it's through Express Scripts Medco. The dental, there are no changes. You have the option of Anthem Blue Cross, Dental Net, DHMO plan, or Delta Dental PPO. There is no change to the vision plan. That is through Anthem Blue View Vision. The basic group term life and accidental death and dismemberment, there's no change, and that's provided through Anthem Blue Cross. The district provides you with $50,000 of life benefit for life and accidental death and dismemberment. <clears throat> Excuse me. New effective October 1, 2012, through CISC is an employee assistance program through Anthem Blue Cross. You can receive up to six face-to-face -face visits per incident. Also new through CISC is basic AD&D, accidental death and dismemberment through Zurich, and that's a flat $10,000 benefit. That's for every single individual that's enrolled, employee that's enrolled in the medical plan. You also have long-term care through UNUM, and your flexible spending account is through Discovery Benefits. The open enrollment period for the flexible spending account is in December, and that's effective January 1. Please welcome Nicole. She's going to do an overview of the CISC medical HMO and PPO plans that are going to be available to you October 1st. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, my name is Nicole Henry, and I'm an account manager at CISC. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, CISC is the organization that provides the medical benefits to College of the Desert employees. Um, what I'm going to do is just go over the plans that you're offered. You've got uh, one HMO option and three PPO options. So first I'll just talk about the differences between an HMO and a PPO for those of you who may not know. A medical HMO requires that you select a primary care physician. Referrals are required for seeing a specialist on an HMO. You do not have to deal with claim forms when you're using an HMO. It's all pretty paperless for the member. Co-pays are for fixed dollar amounts for specific services. Uh, you can change a medical group or primary care physician by the 15th of the month for an effective date of the first of the following. So 
on an HMO, even though you do have to select a primary care physician and medical group, you can make a change if you decide at some point in the future that you want a different. Um, and that's basically how an HMO works. Your doctor is in charge of your care. Everything has to be approved by your doctor. Everything goes through the medical group and the doctor. It's really important on an HMO. In contrast to that, on a medical PPO plan, you do have great freedom and, and flexibility to really go see whoever you'd like. You can go see a contracted provider or even an out-of-network provider if you would like to do so. Um, you are not required to select a, a specific primary care physician. Referrals are not needed for specialists. You can just, like I said, go see whoever you'd like on a PPO. There are no claim forms for network providers. So if you see someone in the network, it's also pretty paperless. You just pay your specific amounts. Um, but if you do go out of network, just know you can do so. You'll be reimbursed at a much lower rate. Though. And you also typically will pay out of pocket first, then be reimbursed by the plan after the fact. But you do have some coverage for out of network. And that being said, the network is very large, and so it's very easy to stay within the network. Uh, okay, so that kind of sums up HMO versus PPO. So now I'm going to talk about the specific plans. Okay, this first plan here uh, is the Blue Shield HMO plan. Now this plan is really, really rich. There's actually very little out of pocket for the member, and there's no change to this this year. It's got a $10 office visit copay with a $7 generic prescription copay and a $25 brand name prescription drug copay for 30 days supplies. Again, as you can see, pretty much no charge down the line other than office visits and an emergency room copay of $100. So a really rich coverage, but just so you know, with an HMO, again, you have to select the medical group and the doctor, and all your care has to run through that doctor and has to be approved by that doctor. So your PPO options, like I said earlier, you're offered a lot more flexibility and freedom on these plans, but they pay a little bit differently. You might be paying more out of pocket throughout the year. Uh, for instance, on this 100 Plan B with the $20 copayment, from what I understand, this is by far the most popular plan that everybody's on. Uh, this plan is changing this year. Right now, it has a $200 deductible for an individual. It's actually going up to $300 this year. So if you're on this plan and remain on this plan after the changes take effect in October, you will be responsible for the difference in deductible should you need to use the services in October through December. For example, let's say that you had to have gallbladder surgery in October, but you've already met your $200 deductible earlier this year. If it's in October, now you're subject to the new deductible amounts, so you would be responsible for the additional $100 in deductible. That being said, that $100 that you paid in the last quarter of the year is actually carried over to the following year. Our plans just work that way. We work with the calendar year deductible, which is January through December, but if you pay anything towards your deductible in the last quarter of the year, we roll that over to the next year for you. So it kind of softens the blow. Yes, you may have to pay the additional 100, but that $100 would be applied to next year should you have to pay. And it works like that for all the PPO plans. So we're, on this plan, I'll just give it again that fall letter example. If say you hadn't met your deductible before, okay, and you're enrolled on this plan for October, you're going to pay your $300 deductible, then the plan's going to pay 100% as long as you stay within the network. That means all you would be responsible for is your deductible, as long as you stay in the network. Would that deductible roll over to next year? It would. If you paid the full $300 in between October and December, yes, it would. Okay. And it works like that every year, just so you're aware. Is there another question on that? Um, so that's that plan, very popular plan again, deductible is increasing. So if you remain on this plan, your deductible will increase. Um, the next plan is not changing this year. It's a 90% plan with a $10 copayment. Um, just so you know, it's kind of unique in that it has a $10 copayment. We don't even offer those plans anymore because $10 is a steal to be able to go to the doctor and only pay $10. But that's one thing that's kind of nice about this plan. It works a little bit differently than the last plan I talked about because that's a 100% plan. This is a 90%. That means after you satisfy your $200 deductible, the plan pays 90% of the bill. You then pay your 10%. Now, should your 10% reach $300, at that point, the plan would pay 100% for the rest of the year. So for example, let's do the gallbladder surgery. Let's just say you had to use the services at all this year, and you enroll on this 90% plan in October, and you go have your gallbladder surgery, you're gonna pay $200 right off the top. That's your deductible. 
that just gets the plan going. Once you satisfy your $200, the plan will pay 90% of the bill, you will pay 10%. Assuming that, that 10, the 10% is probably going to be much higher than 300, so you'll just pay your 300, and then you'll be done for the year. You pay 200 deductible, 300 coinsurance, you're done for the year, you pay $500. And the deductible would actually apply to next year as well. Not the co-insurance, but the deductible does apply to the next year. So that's the same case with the gallbladder. You pay $500 for that, just so we're clear on that. And this plan also has the same prescription drug benefit, $7 generic, $25 brand. So the next plan is the 80% plan G with a $30 copayment. This is a very popular plan with CIS members. It's actually the plan that I'm enrolled on. It's a really good plan, and there's a lot of savings in this plan if you use it right. It costs a little bit less on the front end, meaning your payroll deduction, but you do have more out-of-pocket expenses throughout the year. Uh, the deductible, as you can see, is $500. So this means anything other than an office visit, routine preventive care, and, and prescription drugs, anything other than that, say you needed x-rays, labs, scans, that kind of stuff, you're subject to that $500 deductible, just to make sure everybody's clear on that. Once you satisfy the $500 deductible, plan will pay 80% of the bill. You will pay 20. Should your 20% reach $1,000, you would be done for the year and, and the plan would pay at 100% for the remainder of the calendar year. So for instance, that gallbladder surgery I talked about, on this plan you pay your $500 deductible, you pay your $1,000 co assuming that your 20% reached $1,000, so you'd be out $1,500 on this plan. Now, even though this plan has a bit more cost sharing, as we call it, on, take in mind that you're paying less for it on the front end. So if you can kind of manage the money a bit and maybe save what you would have spent on premium, maybe put it away in a flexible spending account, which is tax-free, you could actually end up saving yourself money. Because on this ADG plan, you only pay if and when you need to use the benefit. But with some of the richer plans, you pay up front. You know, you pay it whether you use it or not, really. But it's just something to think about. I mean. The plans cover the same thing, it's just where do you want to pay? you want to pay up front out of your paycheck, or would you rather pay when you need the services? Um, and this plan is actually changing slightly, so if you're on this plan now, it has a $20 copayment. It is going up to $30 in October. Again, it's got the $7 generics and $25 brands. And again, all these plans have fourth quarter carryover, where the, anything paid towards deductible in the last quarter of the year, which is October through December, will be carried over to the following year. Are there any questions on, on these, how the PPO plans work? Or what's deductible co-insurance? Okay. So, and again, the only thing's not subject to deductible. Office visits, you just pay your copay. Routine preventive care is covered at 100%, no matter what plan you're on. And prescription drugs, you don't need to satisfy deductible. You just pay your copay at the pharmacy. All right. Yes. So the preventative care, so that would include all labs, like the physical? If, if it's billed as part of your annual routine physical, yes. It just, I would, um, and for everybody, it's actually a really good tip. I'm glad you brought it up. It doesn't necessarily, just because that's what you're doing, if you're there in the doctor's office and you say, oh, well, my ear's hurting too, then that's, that's an office visit. That's no longer your annual routine physical. So if you're you know, really good about your preventive care, go in and say, this is my annual routine preventive care. I should not have to pay a copay for this. Because I'll tell you, they will try to collect a copay. And not to their fault, that's just how they do business. You know, they're used to collecting a copay for an office visit. But this is routine preventive care. You should not have to pay a dime for it. And there's actually some flyers over here that kind of take you through the guidelines. For instance, the colonoscopies, mammograms, your woman well visit for the year. You shouldn't have to pay a copay for that. The same thing with babies, newborns. The immunizations, you should not be paying a copay. So, thank you for that question. So those are the plans, one HMO and three PPOs. Uh, prescription drugs are through Express Scripts. Express Scripts and Medco actually recently merged. Uh, just to kind of heads up to everybody that you're going to see slowly Express Scripts kind of integrating their brand into your mailings. You're probably seeing Medco now. In the near future, you're going to see both, and then eventually Medco will be on, and it'll just be Express Scripts. But never fear, it's the same organization, it's all the same, Don't, no need to panic. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is lately in the news is that uh, Walgreens is re-entering Express Scripts network. That is true for their broad network. However, CIS takes advantage of a narrow network, which provides incredible amount of savings to us, saved us $2.3 billion last year. I mean, saves you, the members, that much money. 
So that's, they're not included in our network. They're not rejoining our network. So if there's any rumors out there that you can use Walgreens starting in September, it's not true. You cannot. And please, if you ever hear anyone saying that, please, it's not true. I'm telling you right from the source, they're not part of our network anymore. And it really is because of savings. We hope that in the future, maybe we will have them in our network, but at this point in time, they are not. Okay, so then this just goes a little bit about your customer service. And um, just so everybody knows how our generic drugs work, if you're on a prescription drug and it's a brand name and there's a generic available, we're going to automatically fill the generic. Now, if you for some reason want the brand or need the brand, you would have to either have your doctor approve and go through the steps of getting a prior authorization for the brand, or you would have to pay the difference between the price of the brand and the generic copay, which can be really pricey. Just want to let, you know, 99% of people are fine with generics, but it is something important to know about our clients. Oh, and Lipitor, too. I'll just mention that briefly. It's actually going off patent now, so anyone who's on Lipitor, that's atorvastatin, that will now be the drug that's dispensed. Uh, if for some reason you medically need to be on Lipitor, your doctor would have to go through and approve it. Uh, this is a really fun program to tell you about because there's no catch. You can actually get free generic drugs at Costco. Pass the word along. There's actually flyers here today. Um, you don't even have to be a member. You just walk in the door, let them know you're using the pharmacy, and they will waive your generic copay for you. Um, there is an exception to narcotic pain medication. Those, the copay is not waived, but all other generic drugs you can get at Costco for free. So it's kind of a big deal if you're on more than one generic drug, even if you're on one, it saves you a ton of money. They will, however, only do a 30-day supply at a time, so you'll be at Costco at least once a month picking up your prescriptions. But they are free, which you don't get many things free these days. So. It's something I'm really pleased to be able to share with you that our organization has provided. All right, this is just some information on how to find a Blue Shield network provider. We also have flyers, again, and they're actually posted out on the Benefits web portal, Benefits portal, for you to access. Um, it's really easy to find a provider. It's as simple as calling the phone number on your card or, or heading to their website. Um, this is also the same, but for the PPO plan, again, you can call the number on your card, you can access the website, um, whatever is easiest for you. If you're on the PPO plan, like I said, you have that great freedom to, to kind of go where you'd like to go. Just make sure that when you see a doctor that you're asking them, when you make the appointment, if they are contracted with Blue Shield of California. That's really important because if you just say, do you take Blue Shield of California? Then sure, everybody takes it. You know, they'll take reimbursement. But are they contracted? Meaning, are they in the network? Are they getting the reimbursement rates that have been pre-negotiated? So it's really, really important. If you're ever hesitant about it or just want to check, call the number. Call, call member services. Say, hey, is this doctor really the network provider? I want to make sure. Because when you're on a PPO, that responsibility is on you. So if you go out of network, you may be responsible for higher charges. Yes? Question. If you're, say, in an emergency room and you're mm -hmm. being treated, you ask the doctor, Mm -hmm. Part of it, they say yes, and then an hour later you have a new doctor that you don't know because of shift rotation, mm -hmm. and that person isn't. Right. Where does the responsibility lie at that point? It, It's actually a good question because that does happen, yes. and it happens. You're in an emergency, the last thing you're thinking about is asking the doctor if they're contracted. And even if you do, you can't help it sometimes. It's part of being on a PPO. You will, more than, in that kind of instance, and if you do see someone out of network, even if it was an emergency, even if it was an accident, we reimburse at a higher rate if it's an emergency, which is called customary and reasonable. But still, they can charge higher than customary and reasonable, and they will bill you for the difference, called balance billing. Sometimes the providers will write it off, sometimes they won't. And that can happen, and it typically happens in an emergency situation. When it's kind of out of your control, you're seeing five different doctors, you know, you're being shipped to one room and another, and that can happen. Part of being on a PPO, it really is. Thank you for mentioning that, because it's important for people to know. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you see this first bullet on the left-hand side where it says go to blueshieldca.com slash CIS, that's the Blue Shield website that is uh, dedicated to CIS members. So it's really important that you go to this website as opposed to just regular old Blue Shield website. Not that there's anything wrong with theirs, but this one's customized to CIS members and CIS plans. It's going to even have like our Health Smarts logo and our Health Smarts is our wellness program. So it's really important that you go to this Blue Shield website. And if you guys want to pick up a lanyard over there, the web address is also on the lanyard. And this will be posted on the web portal. 
um, our wellness discount programs, because you are affiliated with Blue Shield, you can get discounts at all these places. Just want to let you know. It's, uh, like, for instance, LASIK Surgery, Weight Watchers, 24-Hour Fitness, uh, Drugstore.com, a couple of the little perks you get for being on a Blue Shield plan. Um, power prevention. Again, these uh, packets are over on the, the table. They're also posted out on the benefits portal. And uh, this is really important because preventive care keeps you healthy, it keeps the plan costs down, and if you stay within your guidelines, like I was talking about with the routine preventive care, it's no, at no cost to you. So you can go access that service with no cost. So it's, these guidelines are really important for a number of reasons. And I'll just kind of flip through them. Uh, they go by age and gender. Obviously, different people have different uh, guidelines for preventive care. Um, now I'm going to jump to our employee assistance program, which is a robust coverage for employees. What it is is you can get six free counseling visits with a licensed therapist in your area per situation. All you do is call the number, and you and all members of your household are eligible for this. Just let them know you're associated with College of the Desert. Um, you call in, and you can get six free visits. They will set you up with that. Um, you can do that for all your members, and it's per situation. So if you, you can typically have more than one situation. You know, you've got six visits, and then you've got another situation. And you're having trouble at work, trouble with finances, um, you're going through a divorce. Whatever it is, this is a great resource. Uh, it also offers a 30-minute consultation with a lawyer and free financial planning advice. So take advantage of it. It's a really good program. It's absolutely free to you as a CIS member. Uh, the last benefit I'm going to talk about that's kind of attached to your CIS benefits is an accidental death and dismemberment through CIS. Now this is a policy, again, that is free to you. It's automatic. You, if you're on a CIS plan right now, you automatically have this coverage for those of you who don't know. It is $10,000 of accidental death and dismemberment coverage. So in the event that you should need it, it is here for you. Uh, there's no beneficiary forms or anything like that. We just we issue it to your heirs in the order of a state, I believe it's called, where it goes your surviving spouse, and then to your kids, and then to your parents, and then to your estate. So again, there's no forms. It's an automatic. It's important that you know that you have this just in case something were to happen. Maybe put the, we've got some flyers here today. Put them in your, uh, where you keep your will or where you keep important documents in case something were to happen. Your family members would know about this. It also applies for a loss of limb or a loss of sight and that kind of stuff. All right, I think I covered the CIS benefits. I'm gonna pass it back uh, to, sure. Delta, sure. to Cheryl with Delta Dental. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cheryl, and I represent Delta Dental, a uh, preferred provider organization, otherwise known as the BPO plan. Um, good news is there are no changes with this plan. Um, I'll just bear, go over some of the, the highlights of this plan. It is a freedom of choice plan, meaning that you can choose any license. Right hand side, laser vision correction. Um, if that's something that you're interested in. There is a discount. Okay, and this is called our special offers. I have flyers up there. You, if you register on our website, you get even more detail. Um, so there are some neat things in here. Uh, middle of the page, I see Senior Link. Now, my mom just turned 87, so I'm thinking, hmm, emergency response system. Might be something that I want to tell her about. She's also an Anthem member. Pet insurance. Get, get it early when they, before they like mine. He's blind, he's old, he's incontinent. Get bad. Uh, Jenny Craig's Weight Watchers, those are all the different discounts that you can get, just what we call special offers. Also, eyewear discounts. So in addition, like I said, you can get the almost 30% off. And then the LASIK and True Vision is discounts on contacts. Hearing aids through Hearpo, Beltone, and on the right-hand side is some allergy control products and things like that. And then this is, uh, the, the website will be on your ID card. Um, you could go online, you could call the 800 number. Uh, same thing with kind of the other products. If you say, do you take Anthem Blue Cross, you want to be more specific. Are you a, 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 a Blue View Vision provider? Are you in the network? Uh, that kind of thing. It's all in the lingo. Okay, and then the term life is a $50,000 flat benefit, which you don't get, of course. That is for your beneficiary. 
I do have a few extra forms on there, so make sure this time of year that you, if, that, if something has changed, you got married or divorced, you might want to update your beneficiary form. There's also a flyer up on the table for this, it's called travel assistance. So if you're someone that does travel often, you like to go to Europe or places abroad, it, um, it is an interesting benefit. Um, it's something called Europe assistance uh, that will help provide employees with um, any kind of emergency you know, information or emergency medical assistance, travel services, maybe pre-departure information. Uh, towards the bottom, it says, you can't hardly see that, receive, let me put my glasses on, receive and transmit emergency messages, emergency cash advances up to $500, emergency medical payments of 10000 and legal assistance, bail, you never know. I told their crowd earlier, I had a guy who was in Mexico, he drank too much, he ended up in jail, and he didn't know he had this benefit. And he says, I could have used that money for bail. <laughs> And so then there's some other things listed there, of finding doctors and, and things of that nature. And then the other thing that's not up there is the resource advisor flyer. It's in English and Spanish. It's not an EAP plan, but it does give you three visits, a face-to-face -face visit with a counselor. Uh, it's tied to the life insurance, just like the travel assistance benefit is. It's a free benefit. So you may want to talk to somebody, maybe you're having issues trying to figure out what to do because a family member passed away. Um, and so it just gives you some, some little resources. There's a book about healing and, and how to deal with death. So um, you have the EAP plan and then this is just a little added uh, benefit for beneficiaries. Okay, any questions? Okay, Jackie's up. Thank you. Okay, that's how to do all that. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good? Okay. I'm, I'm trying to tone it down because I usually talk too much and too loud, so I'm going to be real toned down here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackie Lane from UNUM, and I'm here today to introduce your long-term care insurance plan. And what I love about this long-term care is, and I, I'm excited because it's a benefit that you get, and I go to so many different places you know, different uh, businesses, different schools, and it's voluntary. You have to pay for this benefit. So it is so neat, you get a base benefit, and I'm so happy, and you can get a, uh, a buy-up where you can get more insurance coverage, and we'll talk to you about that uh, during uh, my presentation. And it's just a whole bunch of neat things. So I'm real happy to be here, thanks. And I remember a few faces from last year. So I think the hat gave it away right there. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Okay, so you know when I talk about long-term care, I you know I a lot of you get it confused with long-term disability, and long-term disability is your paycheck protection, you know your your income protection, where long-term care I think is asset protection, because what would happen if we had some disabling illness where we had to go into a care facility? an assisted living facility, or maybe care at home, how would we pay for that? Well, your long-term care insurance policy is there for you, and that's what you would draw from. So what is long-term care? Well, long-term care is a benefit. It gives you a benefit amount that you tailor yourself to give you an amount of money every month if you've had an accident, an illness, uh, maybe, um, where you can't perform activities of daily living. Something that we all take for granted. Don't we take for granted getting out of bed every morning? You know, putting on our pants or putting our dresses on, you know, brushing our teeth, you know, just getting in the shower. But for some people, that is, uh, they can't do it. They need help because of maybe cancer, maybe MS, maybe Parkinson's, maybe dementia, maybe Alzheimer's. That's what that is there for. You know, it's a benefit amount to take care of us. Maybe it, it, we have buy-ups where you can have someone come in maybe and clean your house. Maybe um, do your errands for you. Um, just write your checks. It just do a little main, main, minor things that you thought about doing every day on a daily basis. So long-term care is that benefit amount that we send 
you and you pay the assisted living, the convalescent hospital, or you pay someone to come in. You're totally in charge of this benefit. You know, I, I can go and give you all sorts of information about why we need it. We all know. And I'll give you a little for instance about my own situation. Um, I think I told a few of you last year that my mother, I took care of my mother for 10 years. And um, she did not have long-term care. And uh, we just about went crazy. But um, we, you know, I, I pulled together with my husband because whenever I go and talk to people about long-term care, they'll say, oh, my kids are going to take care of me. <laughs> well, it, it's great if your kids can take care of you, but don't most of us have to work? Most of us do have to work, right? And when my mother was sick, I had two sisters move out of state, and of course my brother couldn't take care of my mom because that's, you know, that's a gal, a lady, and it was very difficult. So we talk about, for instance, you know, about your need, about strokes. We all know people who's had strokes. We all know people who have Alzheimer's. And remember in the old days when grandma and grandpa couldn't remember things? Oh, we just thought, ah, oh, grandma and grandpa can't remember that, right? Well, now they have names, dementia, Alzheimer's. So that's a very true fact in today's market. Um, so we talk about our nest eggs that we've worked all our lives for. Haven't we worked for our, you know, our retirement? Haven't we worked for you know, our savings? It just takes one instance for all that to be gone. So what I love about your school, they've given you a big bucket of money, basically. That's what it is. You, they've given you $1,000 a month for three years. And you know, when you think of $1,000 a month and you think of care, well, not too many districts give that. It's all, like I said before, it's all <coughs> So you have a $36,000 big bucket of money that the college has given you, and that's great. <coughs> Um, when that happened to my mom, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have long-term care, and I was 45 years old. So what I did is I purchased a policy for my husband and myself, middle-of-the-road policies, $5,000 for each of us, so I knew that my kids could not take off work and care for us, and now we both have two middle-of-the-road policies, and I don't have to take from my retirement or take from my savings or my assets because that's why I call it asset protection, because we have to spend down our assets, right? And, um, you know, when we think about our, our medical, we have fabulous medical here, but it doesn't include long-term care. And when we're in, um, maybe being cared for in the hospital, um, they only give us up to 20 days uh, for care, and you have to really get better each day for you to stay there. And my mom was in uh, the hospital, and they had to discharge her early because they said she's not getting better. So we have to look at this. It, you know, it, everything changed when I turned 60. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm really looking at this just, you know, and I thought, maybe I should upgrade my, you know, policy too. So I, I'm, I'm thinking about that myself. Um, when we think about our assets, don't, especially in this day and age, you know when all that craziness happened in 08, we're really all thinking about that, aren't we? And I'm repositioning myself to retire now, but long-term care should be in everybody's portfolio for retirement. I really believe that. So you, you are really a lucky district here. So let's talk about who's eligible. You're all eligible because you're all full-time or retired and have the benefit. Um, where it says no age limit, there is an age limit. It's between 18 and 84. Now that doesn't mean we're going to stop paying you at 84. We're just going to stop writing the policy at 84. <coughs> so if you're thinking of grandma or grandpa or you know, and they're 85, they went past the the um, necessary age limit. Uh, but for siblings, for um, parents, the parents-in-law, uh, brothers, sisters, uh, because we're going to be taking care of them. We really are. We're responsible for for our family members. Um, now, if you want to purchase additional from your thousand dollars, you'll have to go through medical underwriting, and I can help you through that. It's a very easy process. All family members will have to go through medical underwriting, and we'll go through uh, the four plans, and you can go all the way up to uh, 
um, many thousands of dollars, and all the way up to unlimited time periods, which means forever. You know, when we talk about discounted rates, we're talking about a group rate versus the personal rate. And what I always ask everyone is to go and really shop the rate because you'll be so surprised. These group rates are phenomenal. And that's how come I always say, get the rate for your siblings before you leave, before you retire. Because once you retire, you can't get the rate for your siblings because you're gone. Your rate still stays because it's portable. When you leave the district and when you leave the college, you take this policy with you with no rate increase. You're, it's called an age set rate. So when I, when I took my first policy out, my long-term care policy, I was 45. I'm 60 now, and I always say, well, I'm 45 because I'm gonna be 45 <laughs> forever. And uh, that's the deal. Uh, I'm being rated at age 45 years old, not 60. So that's really neat. Um, what I love too is you're in charge of being cared for at home, being, being cared for in an assisted living facility, or being cared for in a convalescent facility. You and your doctor can decide this. Um, so we have level premiums based on your age, and we've talked about portability, and we've talked about your family members. And we've talked about you have $1,000 a month for 36 months, and let's talk about your buy-ups. There's four different plans, and one of the plans contains inflation. When I wrote my policy for my long-term care, the first thing I thought about was, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get this policy to really realize growth? Well, that's inflation coverage. If you're gonna get anything, add the inflation coverage because uh, it grows at 5% on the anniversary date. It's all into the premium, and so it grows every year by 5%. Um, it's just like hospitalization, it's just like gasoline. I mean, I tell people that when I was in college, gas was a quarter a gallon. Now some of you remember that. I know it's funny, but it was a quarter a gallon when I was in my little Volkswagen in college. And now what, almost four something a gallon, 420 a gallon? So that's what inflation does. The same thing with long-term care. So you want your policy to grow, really consider adding inflation coverage. Another uh, addition would be total home care. Now you have professional home care where people come in, nurses, um, licensed uh, personnel come in uh, to take care of you. But you might want um, maybe your hubby, maybe your wife, maybe your uh, partner, you might want a neighbor, someone to come in and you pay them because we send you the money direct. And you pay them to clean your house or give you your medication or shop for you or maybe uh, care for your home. It's really up to you. And that's why I love to say you can tailor this policy with four different plans. You have plan one for, for the thousand dollars for three years. But you can go all the way up uh, for four plans, uh, all the way to six thousand dollars a month for forever, to be paid forever, it's called unlimited. So that's what's so nice about this policy. We have customized enrollment forms for you. And what I think is really neat, we, we did this year, and I think this is so neat, I'm so excited about it, is we put it in a book form. And uh, before, some of you remember that we had a little portfolio that we pulled the forms out. Well, now it's in a book form, so it's all perforated, so it's really nice, and the forms don't fall out, so they, they listen to us. You know, they did listen to me, so that was really great. Um, also, can you see that web address? Is it, is it, can you see that? Where we, okay, great, because it was a little dull, but I think, it, I think it comes out. You know, when I'm here for you, and I'm here to help you, and I'm here to rate it for you, I'm here to rate it for your family members, and that's my job. However, if you leave and you think, well, doggone it, Jackie didn't give me this information, and, or maybe, yeah, I reconsidered, I really want this information. We have our 1-800 toll-free number with all of our advisors, our benefit counselors on the line for you, uh, on the application sheet in this portfolio, in this booklet. So we're not leaving you, we're not leaving you without answering more questions. And if you want me to stay tonight, uh, I can sit with you and calculate it. And what is so nice about a buy-up is the school still pays your base rate. We just deduct the base rate from the 
buy a freight. And that would, is what you would be um, automatically deducted. And so that would be for you and your partner or spouse, deducted payroll. For your um, loved ones, your family members, uh, it would be billed or deducted from their checking account. It couldn't be payroll deducted for you. And uh, these are the highlight sheets that you'll see in um, the booklet. And it just gives you a brief form about, uh, in instructions about um, information about uh, the plans in a brief form, format. And it shows you three years, six years, you're in limited duration. And if you're in a 24-hour care, you get 100%. If you're in assisted living care facility, you get 60% of the uh, money uh, because it takes less money to take care of you in assisted living than a 24-hour care facility. And um, if you're uh, being cared for at home, it is a 50% amount. So let's say you have a $5,000 policy, you're being cared for at home, we'd send you $2,500 a month. So it's as simple as that. Think about this. You have a big bucket of money and you purchase that big bucket, maybe you purchase additional from what the college gives you, and you're taking from that bucket every month after a 90-day elimination, after your doctor has indicated that you cannot perform to activities of daily living or cognitive impairment. That kicks in. So you're taking money from that big bucket. Once that big bucket is empty, your policy ceases. It's over. So, but as if we keep that inflation going, that's great. And a lot of you think, well, how, you know, how does it work? Well, after 20 years, your policy doubles. So I've had mine 15 years. I have five more years to go, and my policy will be doubled. So that's how it works. That's why I say inflation is so important. Okay. I hope I gave you enough information. I hope I gave you a little bit more information than I did last year, but I'm here for you. And I would have told a few more stories, but I know I'm being taped, so, you know, I've got to help down a little bit. But thanks so much. Yes, sir. A question. Um, when it kicks in, it, did, did you say that it's, is it four or six activities of daily living that have it, to? It's two activities of daily two. living that you cannot perform. And it's not like one, two, three, four, five. It's either or. It's you can't dress yourself right. or feed yourself. Okay. Or maybe you can't use the bathroom facilities. Or cognitive impairment. Right. So it's let's say a stroke. Two or cognitive. And is there a way to, if you wanted to have it to kick in after just one, is there a way to buy up to a policy like that? I wish. God, yeah. that would be so nice. Yeah. Yeah, but it's two activities. Oh, well, cognitive is one, okay. so cognitive. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Quick question. Portability, is that only if you upgrade? No. Portability is for everyone. When you decide to leave the college, let's say you're moving or you're, you're going for a different position or you're just retiring, you just let HR know that you want to port that. We'll con you, they'll contact you and we'll send you the port, the port forms. And then we'll just bill you at home. Any questions? Okay, well, thank you all. Thanks so much. I'd like to thank uh, all of our guest speakers today, and thank you for joining us for the open enrollment meetings. And once again, the uh, flexible spending account through Discovery Benefits, the open enrollment period is December uh, for a January 1st effective date, and you can set aside up to $5,000 pre-tax for dependent care for dependent children under the age of 13. And for, um, for a healthcare spending account, you can do up to $2,500 for healthcare expenses. So think about all those office visit co-pays and if you're getting a new pair of glasses, um, any kind of uh, medical expenses that you might be anticipating. There's a whole list of eligible expenses on the discoverybenefits.com website if you're interested in participating in that program. And Debbie, can you mention the October meetings that we're planning for? Oh, thank you. Uh, Diamond would like me to mention that we're going to be having uh, another meeting in, uh, scheduled in uh, October based on Nicole's availability to do an overview of the uh, retiree programs that are available. Not only these plans, but we also have the companion care. These are for retirees 65 and over that are enrolled in Medicare Part A and Part B. And a new product offering that's going to, in effect, October 1 is the Blue Shield Medicare Advantage Plan. And that's an HMO plan, and it's a perfect plan for those folks that reside in a California service area. 
So you'll have two options, the companion care and also the Blue Shield Medicare Advantage plan for individuals 65 and over enrolled in Medicare Part A and B. So that's tentative for October. We'll fill you in on the date as soon as we get that scheduled. Okay, next steps. If you're not making any changes, you do not need to do anything. If you'd like to switch from one medical or dental plan to another, please see Human Resources. You can fill out a changer form that needs to be into Human Resources by 5 o'clock this Friday. Uh, please update your life uh, beneficiary form. If you've had a life event, a marriage or a divorce, or if there's been an unfortunate loss, please update that information. And you do not need to wait until open enrollment to do that. You can do that anytime during the year. And then also, we want to encourage you to take advantage of your regular preventative care exams. I like to do everything in my birthday month so I don't forget. But remember, with health care reform, preventative services are covered at 100%. So schedule your annual routine exam. We'd like to thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, we'll be here for a little bit longer. You're more than welcome to ask myself or any of our uh, guest speakers today. And thank you, Diamond, for putting this together. And I'd also like to thank the Health and Welfare Committee. They've worked very, very hard in putting together a very, very be uh, good benefits package for all the employees of the district. Thank you.